everyone. Welcome to my channel. If it's your first time here, welcome back. If you're a regular, a regular, not irregular, though, if you're irregular, you're also welcome. Anyway, um, my name is Christy. This is AG takes over settle in friends. It's going to be a long video. You told us saw the timestamp. You already know that this is an important topic. Some of you may not like my stance on it, but I want to be thorough. So without further ado, oh, by the way, if you do agree or just in general enjoy my content, please do subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll, I'll just preface it and say hate speech, hate comments will get deleted. But other than that, I am I'm welcome your comments and engagement. Let's get started. Did you all know that American Girl just came out with this book on body image? I had no idea. I didn't know it until I was scrolling Facebook and came across this post. Somebody, um, the, the group that this was in is very diligent. Um, they don't allow certain types of content. So this was deleted immediately, but not before I got a screenshot. So somebody said with one little book, AG is ruined for me and my family. The smart girl's guide body image book does not belong here and I can no longer patronize a company pushing this agenda. It is one thing to write about body positivity and accepting all kinds of bodies, but why are you telling girls about gender dysphoria and using drugs to block puberty? This book is marketed to girls aged 3 to 12. I'm sorry, but this is my line. I teach my children body acceptance and self-love and positivity. This information is not necessary, nor is it AG's place to provide it. They've lost me as a customer, and I hope they lose many more. Such a shame what Mattel has done to AG. Um, just quick, quick fact check. Um, the book says 10 plus, 10 and up on the back of it. So it's definitely not marketed to 3 to 12. Anyway, um, that piqued my interest because I have feelings about that. So I wondered what kind of reception is this book getting elsewhere? Um, depending on how you search, not great. So I found some neutral things by legitimate news sources. Um, I'm sure that the view counts are up now because I started pulling these screenshots several days ago. But um, so, yeah, this one's just kind of documenting Although it's, it's pushing a narrative, but it's saying, you know, some parents are ticked off about this. Then you get Fox News saying Mattel is becoming a gender cult. And when you get to the more fringe alt-right talk shows and YouTube channels, it's even more extreme. I'm just going to put these up here for a few seconds. Hundred and seventy-two thousand views on that. I don't know who that is. I'm pretty sure it's not a, a channel that interests me. Um, but but people are watching it, right? And it made me wonder: Is anybody reacting positively? I did come across some lovely posts on Instagram. I reached out to um, the owner of the Instagram account, melanin.ag, and asked for permission to include her name on her post about this, but I did not want to take the time to reach out to every single person who commented. So I'm including some samples of the positive comments and some pushback from people and just blanking out everybody's names. So here I was able to find things a little, a little more in favor, in support of AG recognizing that this could help save lives. I still hadn't seen the the actual content that people were, you know, having strong feelings about other than this image was my first experience. And then up here at the top, we have somebody saying, nope, this is not something I want to support and lots of responses about it.
I thought this one at the top was really important. Um, parents saying, kids can't go behind my back. Like they're going to go behind your back because they're afraid of you. The book gives some resources. It does say, and I can point this out later. It does say with a parent's permission, you can contact these resources. But of course, parents are afraid that if their kids get their hands on this book, they're going to go behind their backs and reach out to actual factual resource resources um, and get valid information. Not you can't go behind my back, but this is a really valid point. If that's happening, it's because your children are afraid to tell you it's because you're not a safe space for your children. Just pausing here for you to read. I came across another post that was actually a series of three pictures of this doll. I think the colors are kind of tweaked to look more pink and blue rather than like seafoam green and blue of this outfit. And just putting something out there in support of American Girl's decision to be gender inclusive and um, and, and making it vocal. I, I stand against the hate speech that we're hearing as a result of this book. So, yay. Was happy to see those things. All of this, kind of seeing what a controversial thing this has been and just knowing that they had created the book and included um, trans issues in the book. We live really close to the um, Columbus store, so we hopped in the car and we went to Easton and we grabbed the book. So here are some of the things. Um, other than illustrations, I think I grabbed all the instant. I grabbed um, pictures of all of the instances of where gender is addressed. And I'm going to read these out loud to you because it's probably not fair to keep making you read everything off the screen. So gender joy. Messages about how bodies should look are different depending on a person's gender. Girls tend to face more pressure to have thin bodies and long hair and wear clothes like skirts, dresses, and blouses. Boys tend to feel more pressure to have a muscular body, keep their hair short, and wear pants and shorts. Luckily, it's not your job to look the way people expect. It's your job to be you. The way you show your gender to the world through clothes and behavior is your gender expression. Your gender expression can be feminine, masculine, or somewhere in between, and it might change. Maybe you'll experiment with bright dresses and long feminine hairstyles, or you might try baggy shorts, plaid shirts, and a buzz haircut. Your gender expression should make you feel at home in your body. While gender expression is what you show on the outside, gender identity is how you feel on the inside. A girl, a boy, or someone who doesn't quite fit into either category. When a baby is born, a doctor looks at the baby's body parts to assign its sex, whether the baby is female or male. Most kids grow up feeling comfortable in the sex that the doctor assigned. This kind of person is cisgender. But for some, that assigned sex doesn't match who they know they are inside. A kid who is assigned as male might know herself to be a girl inside, for example. Someone whose gender is different than the sex they were assigned at birth is transgender. Some people don't feel like a boy or a girl or a boy inside, which is totally okay. People in this group are usually called non-binary and might use a pronoun like they instead of he or she. All right. Being transgender is not an illness or something to be ashamed of. If you're questioning your gender identity, or if you already know for sure that you're trans or non-binary, talk with an adult you trust, like a parent or school counselor. That person can connect you with a specially trained doctor who can help you and your family decide what's best for your body. At first, you and the doctor might talk about wearing the clothes and using the pronouns like he, she, or they that make you feel most like the true you. If you haven't gone through puberty yet, the doctor might offer medicine to delay your body's changes, giving you more time to think about your gender identity. And if you've already gone through puberty, a doctor can still help. Studies show that transgender and non-binary kids who get help from doctors have much better mental health than those who don't. If you don't have an, organi an adult that you can trust, there are organizations across the country that can help you. Turn to the resources on page 95 for more information. If you're transgender or non-binary, loving your body might feel a bit different than it does for a cisgender person. Parts of your body might make you uncomfortable, and you might want to change the way you look. That's totally okay. You can appreciate your body for everything it allows you to experience and still want to change certain things about it. When you're feeling out of place in your body, do things that make your body feel more like home, like dressing in your favorite clothes and doing something you love. 
Remember, celebrate the good feelings you have in your body right now. Remember, you deserve love and respect no matter what your body looks like or how it changes. And then um, there's a pretty well-known trans girl who, or maybe, maybe she's an adult by now. I think she's still a teen. Anyway, Jazz Jennings um, was quoted as saying, being tra- being transgender isn't a medical transition. It's a process of learning to love yourself for who you are. All right. Still with me? Let's see what else they had to say. Um, the bathroom issue is addressed. Making space for everyone. A world built on beauty standards tells people, sorry, there's only room for a few of you at the table. Everyone else needs to go home. But a world that celebrates all bodies says, squeeze in people. Let's make room for everyone. A good example of how we've already made more room is in the bathroom. Think about the last time you used a public restroom. Was it easy to find one you felt comfortable using? Could you use it easily? Did you feel safe? How would your day have gone? How would your day have changed if using the bathroom meant going all the way home? When public restrooms first became common in the 1800s, only men could use them. Being a woman meant that going out in public for more than a few hours was difficult. How long can you go without using the bathroom? But when women started working, participating in government, and entering the same spaces as men did, they demanded bathrooms, and they got them. Not all women could use them, though. During the Civil Rights Movement, Black women for fought for the right to use the same clean, well-maintained bathrooms that white women used. They changed things by finally convincing Congress to pass the Civil Rights Act in 1964. Still, many women with disabilities couldn't use public bathrooms because most didn't have accessible stalls. These women helped Congress pass the Americans with Disabilities Act in 1990. Today, many transgender and non-binary people are fighting for their right to use bathrooms where they feel comfortable. Slowly but surely, they're changing restrooms to be safe and stress-free places. Public restrooms make it possible for people to get jobs, go to school, travel, and do things outside the house. But to earn that right, did people change their bodies? Nope, they changed the world. And then it has some suggestions for what changes can you make in the world. Um, But first, there was a spotlight on a a girl. There were spotlights on kids um, throughout the book. So this one says, Real Girl Runway, Intersectional Ivy. Ten-year-old Ivy is deaf, transgender, and Jewish, and her first language is American Sign Language. But those identities are just the beginning. She also loves unicorns, llamas, cheerleading, fashion, painting, putting on her mom's red lipstick, playing video games, baking cookies, meeting with other deaf trans youth, and making the world a better place for everyone. Intersectionality is important to Ivy because there's no way she can move through the world as just a deaf person or just a transgender girl. She's both, plus a lot more. Intersectionality means that every single part that's in me, from my head, from my toes to my head, makes me, me, Ivy says. Ivy is proud to be who she is. Still, she sometimes has bad days. To feel better, she draws, polishes her toenails, or talks to her best friend Molly, who's been there for Ivy since before she told people she was transgender. When Ivy first came out to people at her school for deaf students, people didn't understand what it meant to be transgender. So her mom encouraged her to create videos to educate people using ASL. Now people understand better. Ivy's videos also help people in the transgender community better understand deaf people. Her mission is to make space for everyone at the table. And her quote is, everyone should be themselves and be comfortable as who they are. All right, so some change the community suggestions are talk to the owner of a local business about putting up more inclusive bathroom signs. Join or create a group to unite transgender, non-binary, and cisgender students. Final page um, was the resource page that they mentioned earlier, and um, it mentions things like GLSEN and the Trevor Project. So when I first kind of was reading all of this and seeing the controversy unfold, I thought I want to do some kind of response video. Um because I wasn't really seeing that. I'm still not seeing those videos yet. And um, because the people who have an issue with this are loud and they're being watched, they're being heard, they're being believed. And the people who know better and and support AG's decision to be inclusive, sometimes we, we don't realize or we forget that we need to be equally loud and we need to make our support for AG's decision really clear. So this video. Um, And then I thought, oh, hey, I have a friend with a trans son who transitioned very early and I've known her kind of throughout, um, throughout his life. 
let me reach out to her and see if she has time, if she's interested, if she wants to look at the pages, if she wants to weigh in. So I reached out to her and it was an instant hell yes. Um, she said, I'm willing to show them to my son. So get his feedback if he feels like giving it. If not, whatever, I'll, I'll tell you what I think. Um, and then she said, why don't I do you one better? Because I had some follow-up questions and and I said, I know you've a you've answered these questions. I just know people have them still. So do you mind the repetitiveness? And she said, you know what? We sent out a letter to our family and friends kind of early on in this process, explaining what was going on, letting them know how they could be supportive, kind of what we were going through. And then we sent a follow-up letter a year later. Why don't I send you those and you can use what you want? And I said, great, obviously I'll change all the names for your privacy, but great. So um, I'm gonna read several passages. That's why I said settle in, but I wanna amplify voices of people with direct experience with this. So um, I'm, I'm gonna be reading some direct passages and kind of adding some commentary and par paraphrasing things from our conversations outside of those letters. So um, back in 2015, she sent a letter to her her friends and family and um her son had been at that point her son had been expressing that he was a boy for about four months so um she began kind of from the beginning and said approximately the week of june 22nd 2015 cam began refusing the outfits that i'd set out always being in a hurry i would respond by saying mommy doesn't have time for this just put it on which resulted in tears and tantrums at the grandparents' house until, ultimately, Cam got his way and got a change of clothes. Um, since Cam doesn't really have accidents anymore, the only clothes in the diaper bag were Ethan's, his younger brother. So for two days in a row, I picked up the kids and Cam would be wearing Ethan's clothes. The first thing out of Cam's mouth was, don't I look cool, Mom? Then on June 25th, a few days later, Cam said, I am a boy for the first time. This was the moment I realized it was more than just a kid throwing a tantrum over clothes. On July 1st, Cam told my husband, Doug and I, um, I want you to call me brother to Ethan. This was the day our little family started practicing neutral terms. We're not ready to use the term brother yet when we're referring to Cam, so we started using the term buddy. Ethan can't pronounce buddy, so it actually comes out Bubba, and that's become Ethan's term for Cam. I'm skipping forward a little bit. On Friday, July 24th, Cam got the big haircut. Cam was so ecstatic, I cried. Then I got over it and I was able to enjoy Cam's happiness. We went to several functions and over, and it was a weekend thing, we went to several functions and over and over, people who didn't know my child called Cam a boy. It was difficult for me and difficult for my husband, but it made my child smile. On July 28th, so all of this is happening kind of Boom, boom, boom. On July 28th, Doug and I made the decision to call Nationwide Children's Hospital and ask about a program that specializes in children with gender concerns. While we were waiting for an appointment with them, Doug and I had plenty of lengthy conversations with, we also had lengthy conversations with the program coordinator. We talked about our goals as parents, to raise strong children that have the freedom and support to figure themselves out. And the guiding principle we learned in raising children that show gender concerns, whether they are temporary or permanent, is let the child lead. And she went on to explain what she had learned about, what if you don't, what if you don't support your kid? She says, the statistics for children that experience gender concerns that do not have parental support show that between 40 and 50 think about or try to commit suicide. The age that these children begin to have these thoughts can be as early as seven. When a child has parental support in this process, that statistic drops from 40 to 50 to 2%. And then she continues, understand there's no way to tell if this is temporary or permanent at this point. Only time will tell. Typically, the more consistent, persistent, and insistent a child is um, over a number of years is the main indication that this will be permanent. Even that's not guaranteed, regardless of the outcome of this process, it's clear to me that Cam feels like a boy at this time and has consistently for the last four months. Cam has made statements that left Doug and I shocked. Um, like on August 4th, Cam began asking Doug and me to advocate to family and said, 
Tell the family I'm a boy because they don't believe me and they don't understand. The child's four and a half at this point, right? Parents have no agenda. This wasn't part of their plan. They weren't, this didn't happen because they read about it in a book. This is just organically what their child is expressing to them, okay? Um, on August 6th, Cam started talking about bathrooms. We were at a restaurant when Cam had to go to the bathroom. I took Cam with me and Cam said, but I'm a boy, so I should go in the boy's bathroom. And there was a longer conversation that followed that. I'm gonna kind of gloss over it. There's a lot to read. Um, August 19th was a big one. Cam loves to pretend he's a dog. Cam has always chosen to pretend to be our dog, Max. Out of the blue, Cam told me, I always pretend to be a dog and I always pretend to be Max because when I'm Max, people call me a boy and they say, good boy. That's when I left the room and cried again. Doug and I have since had many discussions, arguments, shared many tears, and talked about our fears since all of this began in June. We've gotten closer as husband and wife and more respectful to each other as well. We're now at the place where we're okay with everything that's going on. We always use neutral terms. We sometimes avoid pronouns because it's easier than facing the possibility of Cam saying, I want you to call me he or him. When we do use pronouns currently, it is still she or her because Cam hasn't called us out on it yet. We don't use the words girl, sister, or daughter because those are trigger words. So I'm sharing this with my friend's permission, but I think it's really important to see even somebody who is being supportive and sees that 40 to 50% um, suicidal ideation or attempt statistic and somebody who like started accessing the right resources very early on struggles, right? This is not something that some parent is just like, I want this. I'm part of the woke agenda. I really want this for my kid. Um, she said, we tell Cam, we want you to be whoever you are. If you're a boy, that's fine. And later, if you feel like a girl again, that's fine too. We also point out that it's okay to be a girl and like who likes boy things. Cam responded by saying, I know, but I'm a boy that likes boy things. And then she describes her discussions with her husband um, and her and the school staff and ways that they advocate for their child in medical appointments and Throughout this letter, it's clear that her four and a half and later five-year-old is being given the freedom to explore gender concerns or gender options, even though this is a source of confusion and fear and grief for his parents. She ends with this letter with, no one knows where this path will take Cam. All we know is that Cam is still the same intelligent, funny, sensitive, creative person that we've had all along. Cam is healthy and thriving and will continue to do so with the increased knowledge and support of our family and friends. And then there's some very specific guidance for family and friends to use neutral terms like kid, child, buddy, to avoid trigger words like girl, sister, daughter, um, to not correct someone if they call Cam a boy, and to apologize if they make a mistake. At this point in Cam's life, given the newness of the situation and his age, they were more viewing this as a period of, um, as, as a time of gender exploration for their child rather than moving directly to he, him pronouns and calling their child son. So now we'll read the second letter or excerpts of it. So in June of 2016, she sends another letter and um, part of the beginning says, our basis for making decisions throughout this journey has been let your child lead. It's been stressful and challenging, but also enlightening. We have been taking Cam to a wonderful counselor every three weeks since December and she's confirmed that during their sessions, Cam has also been consistent, insistent, and persistent about being a boy. In December, Cam began asking us to use he, him instead of she, her. We continued trying to avoid pronouns by using Cam's name for a few more months. They weren't ready. Um, they didn't insist on she, but they weren't ready for that pronoun switch. As you can probably imagine, it can be very difficult to avoid pronouns altogether. And with a few slip ups, Cam continued to request he, him be used. Starting this past February, we began using male pronouns in our home so that Cam could have 100% affirmation in his gender identity within the walls of our home. Although it felt awkward and still does sometimes, it has gone well. And by the way, in the letter, this is the first time she starts using he and his and him. I have been using it since the first letter because I know how Cam identifies now and I wanted to respect that. But um, there was a lot of Cam, Cam, Cam avoiding all pronouns in the first letter. 
Cam will begin kindergarten this fall. We've shared his gender identity with the principal at his new school, and she's been amazing already. She said that she and some other staff members have discussed this and are ready to make sure Cam's transition into kindergarten is as smooth as possible and that he'll be supported as the boy he feels he is. This has been great to hear because Cam's last year of preschool was a little bumpy. We think it's because the teachers and the students were confused. We didn't ask them to switch pronouns since it was so new to all of us. We asked them to have that they avoid pronouns and use Cam's name instead. That led to a lot of mistakes in front of class. And she talked about how those mistakes actually impacted his enthusiasm about school and said that there were quite a few days that he asked not to go to school. So here's a tie to school support, parental support, and enthusiasm and actual outcomes in a learning environment. Um, she was reflective and said, it was obvious that by trying to remain neutral when Cam was consistently identifying as a boy, we were doing more harm than good. I love her for many reasons, but I love her for her honesty. Um, and then she again shared resources with her friends and family. I can link some of those in the description, um, but I just want to say she was being very informative. And um, I love this next part. She said, please understand that we know this is a huge adjustment. However, our focus cannot be on the comfort level of others. We can only do what we and current practices show to be the best options moving forward. We refuse to let Cam be in the 41% that I mentioned 40 to 40 or 40 to 50%. 41% is um, the most frequently cited statistic in terms of trans kids who aren't supported thinking about or attempting suicide. So we refuse to let Cam be in the 41% and hope you'll continue with us so that we can all be sure we're doing our best to respect Cam. If Cam realizes at some point that he feels more like a girl and wants to be referred to as a she, then we'll continue to do what we've been doing, which is supporting our child exactly where they are in that moment. When I sent her pictures of the book that we had bought, like sent her pictures of all the text, she said, AG did an exceptional job with this information. It's such an important topic. And I asked her some questions related to things that I think there's a lot of misinformation about, especially there's a lot of fear mongering about. And, you know, people who are heavily criticizing this book are saying it advocates for medical interventions on young children as if people are forcing permanent major medical procedures on children. So talk to me about Cam's situation. Cam was four and a half when he began objecting to girls' clothes, and shortly after that, like days after that outright said, I am a boy, right, at four and a half. He didn't take a single medication until he'd been identifying as a boy for years. He had transitioned socially completely and didn't start any kind of medication, any blockers um, to delay puberty until after he entered the early stages of puberty at age nine. Is age nine, does that feel young to, to start taking medication? Yes, I think for some people. Is it a permanent medical procedure? No, it's delaying puberty. And you're doing this for a kid who's been telling you I'm a boy since four and a half. It doesn't seem that extreme to me. Um, I asked about her younger son. Has he ever shown any gender concerns? Because some people think this is contagious. And if you, you know, you do this for one kid and they're all going to just forget what gender means and they're going to get confused. She said, he is, her quote, he's as cis as cis can be cisgender if you're not familiar with the term you know it would be perfectly fine if neither of them were cisgender and if her younger son were trans it wouldn't be proof that that's why um but in case you're wondering my friend has one trans son and one cis son um she talked about the extreme lack of resources and said i would have given anything for more resources and support in the beginning um, but she knew someone who was in a relationship with a trans person and her husband had met a couple trans kids through his work in prior years. So they had some starting point. She said, if we'd had zero connections, whew, I don't even want to think about that. It was so hard even with support. And then at another point, she said, this book could potentially be the only positive and resourceful thing that a parent sees about trans kids especially if they're conservative and all their social media support their um, biased opinions. So the final words that I want to leave you with from Callie, or my friend Callie, is representation matters. There are trans children in this world, whether people agree with it or not. 
They have the right to see themselves represented in a positive light. I feel that the majority of people that disagree or come at the community don't have direct experience, don't have anyone transgender close to them. Why would you listen to people with no experience? We need those positive images to drown out the hate. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am emotional about this, but it's really a cold. Um, I've been advocating for my child for seven years. It's repetitive. It's exhausting. Data and science backs up everything the American Girl Book says. I'll continue to fight, especially when it's hard, hoping one day I won't have to. My son is getting to an age where he'll start advocating for himself, and as much as I wish I could take all, this, all the hate instead of him, he's confident, he's intelligent, and he's proud of exactly who he is because we listened to him and we believed him when, we, when he told us who he was. Had to pause for coffee. This winter crud is no joke, friends. All right, so remember I said um, Callie showed the book pages that are the you know pictures that I sent her to her son, and um, I had asked a couple questions. So on is AG pushing an agenda? Cam said straightness is forced on LGBTQ people all the time. People should be able to be who they are. Of course you shouldn't force anyone to be trans, just as you shouldn't force anyone to be cis. People choose their own path. Each person knows their own body themselves and should be trusted to explore their gender. If anyone's feeling forced, parents should sit down with their child and tell them it's okay to be any gender, just like it should be okay to be any sexuality. Um, I asked about the importance of this book to get a 12 year old's opinion, almost 12. He's almost 12. Um, it, and he looked over the pages and said, I think this helps parents understand what transgender means and it may help the child understand as well. It's always important to feel good about your body. This book can help children of any age and parents feel good about their body. If someone is making you feel bad about yourself, go to someone you trust or that can relate to the issue for advice. Transgender kids who go to the doctor have better mental health and can make medical body changes as well, like me. I'm a trans male that doesn't want breasts, so I got help from a doctor to delay those changes. They can also help if a kid has already gone through puberty. And Cam's final thoughts were, for a well-known company like American Girl, this is a major step in the right direction. Yep. Yes, it is. Um, remember, you may not have seen the book, but I showed you pictures at the beginning of this video. Um, at the beginning of the video, I showed you a page in the book that mentions a Jewish deaf trans girl. It talks about intersectionality, um, and her name is Ivy. Turns out that my friend Callie knows that family, and she put me in touch with Ivy's mom. Um, the body image book doesn't give details about Ivy's journey, but I learned that she remembers identifying as a girl as early as two and coming out as a trans girl at age five. Her mom said that she didn't go on any type of medication for another five years when puberty started. So again, here's a kid who knew at two and eight years later when puberty was starting, decided to, decided, decided themselves to, or herself to take puberty delaying medication, a temporary thing. And um, her mom expressed some frustration at the amount of misinformation as these parents are gonna do because they are experiencing it firsthand. She said directly, I feel like certain politicians push parents to believe things that aren't true and to believe that being transgender isn't a real and valid thing. I was that parent once. I didn't know anything at all about what transgender meant. I didn't know people like that really existed. I thought they're just wannabes or want attention until Ivy came out to me at age five and I thought she was crazy. I should mention that Ivy's mother is also deaf and she talked about how there are even fewer resources available in American Sign Language. Um, her husband did know a few trans people before they met and was able to offer some guidance and help her get started with her research. Um, I told her, you know, I think what you and Callie have in common is that your children let you know about their gender very young and they were both lucky that even though you didn't know trans people, you knew someone who did and that helped you have a starting point to learn and adjust. And as a result, your kids have been able to be supported from very early on and not be among the 41% of trans kids who think about or attempt suicide. Um, that's why I think that this book is important. 
right? Not every parent knows someone who has a connection to the trans community. And if they don't find those resources, they may not support their child correctly. And that can have fatal consequences. Um, at one point, Heather, Ivy's mom, addressed the misinformation that children are having surgeries forced on them. And she said children aren't allowed to have surgery until they're not children. They cannot have the surgery until they turn 18 because of their still developing bodies and brains. Um, you know, Ivy went on medication at 10, which she emphasized was her choice. She said, it's important for parents to listen to their children. It's the child's journey rather than their own, which I can't imagine. I'm sure it doesn't feel that way, but it is true. And she's saying this in retrospect. Um, and if you don't listen and you don't provide for your child's needs, it can lead to gender dysphoria, severe mental health issues, and suicide. She echoed Callie's motivation for supporting her child through this new and scary and difficult situation, but she put it really bluntly. I choose a live daughter over a dead son. Yeah, as a parent, that hits home. And as a parent, I don't understand how you wouldn't make that decision. I'm going to pause for a second. All right. Whew. If you're still watching this video, I cannot thank you enough. I know it's long. Like I said, when I started seeing all the vitriol being directed toward AG, um, I knew I wanted to respond. I want them to know that there are many people who support and appreciate and understand the value of what they, what they did here. Um, maybe you're watching this and you already agree with their, with their decision, with, with everything that they've included. Great. Great. I would encourage you to show that support on social media. I would encourage you to purchase the book, which by the way, addresses so many other important things like the economics and who benefits from selling self-loathing to girls and media literacy and colorism and self-awareness and consent and all of these great things. Like the book is awesome. Awesome. Um, maybe you're watching this and you didn't know much about the topic or you didn't have a strong opinion one way or the other. If that's you, Thank you for watching the whole way through. I hope it's been informative. I hope that maybe you'll adopt the view that these children need us to do better than be neutral. Um, they need to know they're loved and supported as they are. And they need us to speak up and advocate for them and validate them when they are attacked with hate speech, like the hate speech that's being directed to them right now. Um, and maybe you have always believed that gender is determined by your genitals and that it is static, that it cannot change, that anyone who says otherwise is out to hurt children. If that's you and you're still listening, that's a big step. Thank you. Thank you for being, being willing to listen to someone else's perspective. Um, a lot of us, a lot of what we believe can be influenced by those around us, but those around us don't always have direct experience or factual knowledge about the issues that they're weighing in on. So I hope that if, that, if you're in that last category, that you'll continue to be open to new perspectives and consider contacting some of the resources that I'm going to link in the description in order to learn more. All right. Um, like I said, I changed Cam's name because his family would like privacy, but Ivy is actually quite open about her journey. She has a Facebook page and an Instagram page or Instagram account that are open to the public. So I'm going to link those in the description as well. Um, I'm going to also link an interview with Ivy and her mother, Heather, not an interview with me, but an interview with somebody else. They're both deaf, so the interview is in American Sign Language, but if you don't know sign, you can read the transcript that's on the right-hand side of the video. Thank you again. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you in my next video, and I promise it will be a lighter topic.